Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Hope you're doing well. It's been a pretty wild January so far. We've blown up entire chunks of Sanctuary with firebombs in Diablo 2, and I accidentally made the audience cry with Pikmin 1's yellow Pikmin only run. Sorry about that. This week, though, we're going to try something a bit more familiar. Today, we're going to find out. Can you beat Demon Souls with only daggers? For those who aren't aware, I love daggers. They're light, have quick attacks, and tend to do incredible critical damage when you backstab or repost with them. And when it comes to the Souls series, there's not many games out there that do it better. And I think it's about time that we pushed our dagger run backwards in the series. Don't worry, I'll use daggers in the other games eventually. The year is young. Man, anyone else getting some major anime vibes right about now? Giant monster, small protagonist with only a knife as their weapon. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I know I've seen this before. Speaking of anime, today's video is brought to you by Persona 3 Reload. Is... is that a dagger in your hand? What? No. I would never. Do you have fond memories of playing the Persona series, but can't find your old PlayStation 2? Do you wish you could play it again, but maybe without the old school jank? Well, good news! Persona 3 Reload is launching on February 2nd and is now available for pre-order. Rebuilt with modern day graphics and quality of life features, you can return to the specialized extracurricular dungeon squad and relive the glory days of your high school youth. Go back to a time when streaming subscriptions weren't a thing, the hardest part of life was studying for your finals, and punching monsters in the face with your boxing gloves, and then summoning the wrath of God herself was just a normal Tuesday. Wait, hold on a minute. I don't remember doing anything like that when I was in the boxing team. Ooh, everyone shut up, there's a crane game! Yeah. Explore a world where the ordinary and extraordinary mingle, where you must both be strategic in battle and strategic in life. You know what's even bigger, Yukari? My anxiety about all the tests I have tomorrow. I'm a high school student in a highly competitive society. I don't have time for- So, if you're interested in playing Persona 3 Reload, you can pre-order now, using the link in the description below. The game will be available on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows, Steam, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5, and will release on February 2nd. Huh. You know, maybe I should do a Persona challenge run at some point. That'd be a pretty wild ride- No, wait, not the face! Alrighty, let's get this party started. I select the Thief class, since it starts with the dagger, choose the Providential Ring as my starting gift, then begin the journey across the fog. We could have chosen the Wanderer class, since it too starts with a dagger, and even has more dexterity, but the Thief has more intelligence and magic stats, which sounds unimportant, but trust me, it'll matter later. I unequip my shield, since shields are not, in fact, daggers, then test out my weapon's moveset on one of the locals. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. The dagger has a very quick moveset, and its swings are wider than you think, letting you carve up more than one enemy at a time if they're standing close together. On top of that, one repose from this thing is enough to kill an enemy outright, and the backstab damage is no slouch either. Good lord, those animations are juicy. We're gonna have fun today, I can tell already. The lack of a shield is a bit of a bummer, since that buckler would make parrying enemies even easier, but we have to make this run challenging somehow. And besides, we didn't use a shield in Dark Souls 1's dagger run, and YouTube is all about consistency, don't you know? In any case, I blow my way through the tutorial level and encounter the first boss of the run. Jiggle Physics. Uh, I mean the Vanguard Demon. This fight is pretty simple. Just stick behind the boss and stab away at tree trunks here. The boss will start moving towards the walls or the entrance at some point during the fight, so pay attention to your positioning. And don't be afraid to step away from the fight. Better to take a break than to get forced into a corner trying to keep up the pressure. It takes a bit to get the job done, but not as long as you'd expect. And after only a few minutes of hacking the vanguard to pieces, I send Jiggle Physics back to where it came from. So, you know, probably Fatal Fury too. Now, Demon Souls doesn't actually expect you to beat the vanguard demon, but if you do, you can collect a bunch of rewards. There's some upgrade materials, a bunch of poppable souls, and you can even get a piece of the backlog brand armor. Doesn't exactly match my outfit at the moment, but wearing a helmet is important. Gotta keep all that soup sloshing around between my ears from spilling out. Whew, thank god I was wearing a helmet. That could have been bad. But don't worry. There's no rest for the wicked, and our demon slaying adventure has only just begun. Time to get to work. I put my helmet aside for now, briefly entertain the idea of upgrading my dagger before deciding against it, then make my way to 1-1, the gates of Boletaria. Oh yeah, I always forget how squishy you are in the beginning of the Souls games. Thankfully, the starter enemies are too, and enemy poison this game was pretty wonky. And by that I mean it didn't really exist for most enemy types. Which means, so long as we parry an enemy or hit them first, chances are we can burst them down to zero health before they can react. Now, don't worry. This run isn't a complete cakewalk. 
Any enemies that are wearing armor are more than happy to consume my entire stamina bar before dying, so that's a problem worth considering. For now, I have to play on the safe side, darting in and out of combat as necessary. The armor wouldn't be a problem if I gave enemies a solid repost, but it turns out that parrying weapons with your bare forearm is a bit harder than you'd think. But with the cling ring on one finger and the thief ring on the other, we're now a little bit tankier and stealthier than we were before. No, don't worry, Estrava, I'll get it. You just keep all that expensive magic weaponry over there where it could be the most useful. Oh, and in case they don't have that in the royal court, we peasants call that sarcasm! Accept this as a token of my gratitude. Gee, thanks. A shiny tube. How thoughtful. I collect a few more upgrade materials around the map, take full advantage of Demon Souls' terrible enemy AI to sneak in as many backstabs as I can, then live up to my class's name and steal a fire resistance ring from a nearby dragon roost. Not even close. And with the Bulletarian gates finally opened, we can face off against the boss of the area, Phalanx. Considering the last two challenge runs of this game used unconventional weapons, I have a sneaking suspicion this fight is going to be wildly different than what I'm used to. Phalanx is very weak to fire damage, and it just so happens that I have some Pine Resin on hand. This ought to be good. Oh yeah, that'll do. But it's not perfect. If I don't have the right angle, my little dagger bounces off Phalanx's shield wall, doing minor damage to them, and more often than not, nearly fatal damage to me. Alright, time out. Let's reassess what's going on. Uh, I, I didn't really mean you, but sure, go ahead, I guess. First thing to note, two-handing my dagger keeps me from bouncing. That's incredibly important, and lets me keep my DPS up nice and high. Second, one-handing my dagger has a faster moveset than two-handing, and while the base damage is smaller, the extra attacks I can squeeze in really let the buff damage shine. So long as I have an elemental weakness I can exploit, and so long as the boss doesn't bounce my weapon, going absolutely ham on the R1 button is a perfectly legitimate strategy. 1-1 one -one cleared. Moving right along. If you've watched my other Demon Souls runs, you know the drill. After every boss, we'll be throwing ourselves from the third story staircase as a victory celebration to stay in soul form. Why? Because obtuse game mechanics, that's why. And because we'll definitely need pure white world tendency later in the run. But with Phalanx defeated, we can now level up. Which means it's time to think about what kind of build we're going to use. There's plenty of ways to upgrade your weapons in Demon Souls. You can make them use fire, magic, poison, extra critical damage, you name it. But here's the thing, I don't think we need any of that. In fact, we don't even need to level up. Because we chose the Thief over the Wanderer class, we've actually got all the stats we need to pick up and use the next piece of my arsenal. Enchant Weapon. Be careful how you use it. Normally, it would not be granted to one such as yourself. I had to make an exception. For the sake of Sage Freak. Note to self, kill the wizard later. Oh, uh, did I say that out loud? In any case, time to press forward into 1-2. Well, well, look who it is. Stuck, are we? Don't worry, I have a super useful tool that should help you out. Is it working yet? Oh, alright, fine, we'll help out Solaire 0.5. But I need to grab something first. There we are, our first catalyst. It may not look like much, but this wooden wand is actually one of the stronger catalysts in the game. At least for my purposes, anyway. I hack and slash my way through the underbridge, save Estrava for the second time, then scurry my way across the remaining bridges, avoiding dragonfire and crossbow bolts as I go. And before you know it, we're at the boss, the Tower Knight. I start with his entourage of crossbowmen, collecting all the goodies they drop as I go. Whoa, hey, watch where you're shooting that thing. Then all we need to do is hack and slash at the Tower Knight's ankles to- Oh my god, that's the worst damage I've ever seen. Well, good thing we thought ahead. The Tower Knight might not be weak to slashing damage, but he sure as hell is weak to magic. Coating our blade in blue lets us cut through his armor like hot butter, bringing him to the ground with ease. Which means we can then apply said blue to his body and face. And there goes his health bar. Absolutely melted. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> oh, looks like our man has one HP in a dream. No, wait, he was already dead. He just didn't know it yet. Now, I know what you're thinking. Lemon's gonna put all of his stats into dexterity and be a glass cannon again, isn't he? Well, surprisingly, no. Turns out, if I've done my homework properly, we've got pretty much all the dexterity we'll ever need for this build. Better to dump some points into health for now. I know, I'm scared too. But with that done, it's time to start gathering up all the tools we'll need for the rest of the run, starting in World 3-1. I slay all the mind flayers around the map, channeling all of my Baldur's Gate 3 anxiety into each and every backstab, collect all the keys hidden around the map, and free an entire room of prisoners from their cell. Excuse me, pardon me, make a path, make a path! And would you look at that, our endgame weapon, ripe for the taking. A whole whopping five points better than the dagger we already had. Be still, my beating heart. 
And while the stat scaling will get better over time, it's also no better than the regular dagger in that regard either. Moveset is the same, crit damage is the same, and no special hidden qualities that I'm aware of. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That said, I just so happen to have a good number of upgrade materials, so we can at the very least boost our secret dagger up to plus four. The rest of the upgrade materials can be found in World 2, so that's where we're headed. You want to play? You've got to be. FromSoft, you're not going pay to play on us, are you? Truly, this is the worst timeline. The miners in World 2 are all slash resistant, but take heavy damage from piercing attacks. Which is my way of saying that I backstabbed and parried anyone and everyone that I came across. And after stealing all the upgrade materials from the verified bag holders, I visit the hidden blacksmith in the area and upgrade my weapon to plus five, which puts my dagger damage at a whopping 105. Every little bit helps, but with nothing else here for me to collect, it's time for the boss of 2-1, the armor spider. I take advantage of the melee distance exploit we found last time, buff up my weapon, then watch as the boss's health bar disappears in large chunks. Not gonna lie, when you've got an actual weapon in this game, it becomes almost disappointingly easy. Demon Souls bosses only ever had about five moves each, and the balancing of this game is somehow worse than the Souls series, if you can believe it. Well, that's the armored spider dead in two cycles. I, uh, I think the dagger might be overpowered. Wasn't expecting that. And to think, I was mentally preparing myself to have to resort to hyper mode and all sorts of other cheesy strategies. I mean, look at this. I just killed a skeleton with a dagger. That would never fly in Dark Souls. Well, might as well bulk up the build a bit more. I skip 4-1 in its entirety and grab the regen ring, then make a beeline for the boss, the Adjudicator. Unlike the last two times I've fought him, I'm gonna have to get in close this go around. But the fight itself is simple. Just wail on this metal chunk here, knock the poor boy over, then let your dagger do all the talking. And let me tell you, my dagger is a chatterbox. Another boss down in two cycles, and I didn't even use magic weapon for this one. The heck is going on? Well, might as well lean into my advantage. I pump points into Vitality and Endurance, because more swings means more damage, go to World 2-2 to do some Crystal Lizard farming for upgrade materials, then test out my new Endurance against the Great Club Twins. We already knew that parries and backstabs were super effective against enemies, but as expected, our massive stamina bar, combined with the game's very poor implementation of poise, is basically an instant win button. We've created a monster. But our monster isn't done yet. I scour the rest of the level for any remaining upgrade materials I can find, find some swanky new clothes that I don't recognize from the original Demon Souls, but greatly appreciate due to the increased fire resistance, boost my dagger all the way up to plus nine, then decide that's probably enough and face off against the brick wall of every run, the Flame Lurker. Hey buddy, how's it going? Do you like magic? Sure you do, everybody likes magic. Now, it's not all fun in games. As per usual, Flame Lurker is annoying as hell, bouncing around the arena and causing damage just by moving around you. And despite me having over 20 vitality, wearing the most fireproof armor I have, and the flame resistance ring, his attacks still hit for about a third of my entire health bar each time. But we've got a secret advantage. Remember that providential ring we started with? My thief comes out of the box with high item find as it is, and combined with that ring's increased item find, I made a point to farm some high level healing herbs before coming to the fight. Which means, so long as I can sneak in a heal between the flame lurker's volleys, I can heal myself right back to full. And with one final push, that's all she wrote. The flame lurker goes back to whatever plane of hell it belongs to, and I get to push forward into my own personal one of my own making. After a little bit of research, I decide to put my souls into intelligence and magic, boosting my magic weapon damage and giving me another spell slot in the process. Then make my way into the final level of World 2 and face off against the Dragon God. It's just a puzzle gimmick, boss. How bad can it be? What the hell is going on? I don't remember this boss being hard. Did something change with the remake? I mean, I know you're supposed to hide behind the pillars, but it feels like the boss notices me before I can even hit the second rubble pile and kills me every time. I even went out of my way to purchase the invisibility spell and throw on the thief ring in hopes that the dragon god wouldn't be able to see me. I mean, this works for the old hero boss, so surely it could work for this boss too, right? Yeah, no, wishful thinking I'm afraid. Apparently the dragon god can smell me from a mile away and knows exactly where I'm hiding. Add another body to the growing pile. To add to the confusion, the Dragon God appears to have gotten a lot glitchier than I remember as well, literally plucking me up out of the arena with his big old grippers. Am I going crazy? I feel like I'm going crazy. It's this particular pile right here. I don't know why, but the run from it to the safe zone feels longer than it should be. 
and the Dragon God always aggros before I can get back, no matter what I try. I got stuck here for over an hour. An hour! This was supposed to be the easiest boss in the game, why am I- I did all sorts of testing with the boss. Attacking less times, only moving when his head was looking the other way, everything I could think of. In the end, nothing worked. My only guess is that the combined problem of my weapon having basically zero range, and very little raw damage, is making it so that I can't clear the rubble in time. Or I'm just bad. That's always a possibility, I suppose. Eventually, after banging my head against the wall for another 30 minutes, I discovered the secret. If you rush in and attack the wall, then run all the way back to the start of the puzzle, his attack misses you. Turns out he has bad tracking and doesn't follow you with his fist. He just punches the zone that you're supposed to be hiding behind. Has it always been like this? Am I dumb? Oh god, I'm dumb, aren't I? Well, it's a good thing I learned that little trick, because after an hour of being stuck on the same piece of rubble, I got greedy and instantly died to Dragonfire. Guess we get to test that theory again, but good news! Now, for no reason in particular, I can actually make it back to the column safely before the boss notices I'm there. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, I feel better now. Chances are, this was one of those times where I just needed to put the game down, do something else for a few hours, and come back to it with a fresh mindset. It's actually upsetting how often that works. Time to finish this travesty of a boss fight. Magic weapon up, Dragon God down. And with that, World 2 is cleared, and we've defeated our first Archdemon. Which means we now have access to World 1-3 if we want it. Which I do. Which I very much do. You see, there's a special something something at the end of 1-3 that would make our build even stronger than it already is. It might be hard to obtain, but we've gotta try. But, you know, maybe try harder than that guy did. The enemies here aren't overly difficult, and they all drop strong healing herbs, so even if this excursion doesn't work out, at least we're restocking on heals. Oh hello there, you've certainly dumped plenty of points into intimidation, but can you fight an enemy you cannot see? Didn't think so. Come back when you're older, kid. I'll poke your eye out. Huh, I guess even simple enemies can become deadly if put in the right combination and locations. But you know what? That's okay. There's actually a few items that I skipped over in my excitement, and I should probably level up a bit more before tackling 1-3 anyway. I grab the silver bracelets, which increase the amount of souls you get for every enemy killed, make my way over to the prison bridge to collect the clever rat's ring, which is always good to have in case things ever get desperate, and bump into tier 3 Thomas over here. I won't cause you trouble. I won't. Trouble already found you, my friend. Speaking of trouble, who's this joker? What do you think this is? You trying to beat me at my own game? Huh? Huh? Anywho, time to face off against a fool's idol. Yeah, yeah, I called her the false idol last time, I know. I was hours into a crossbow only run, cut me some slack. I take a moment to collect the second to last dagger in the game, the baby's nail, which is completely worthless, but fun to have, then take the idol down to below half health before the fight has even officially begun. Well, if this fight is going to be that easy, I might as well test a theory that a bunch of comments mentioned last time. Apparently, you can tell if one of the idols floating around is a clone or not by locking on. If you see a health bar, it's a clone. And if you don't, it's the real deal. Which is helpful if you're up close, but doesn't exactly work if the real idol is all the way across the arena and out of reach of your lock on. At which point, you should probably just stick with watching which idol the minions worship, or which idol is shooting the biggest beams. But hey, more tools in the toolbox is never a bad thing. Good call, comment section. You get a gold star today. Oh hey, look, a live action replay of what happens to my stomach when I eat dairy. Thanks, cheese demons. But before we press on, I've got some unfinished business to attend to. Come on, Freak. Sentence is over. Pack your things. I've got a job for you when you get out. Freak here is the advanced magic teacher for demon souls. And while the base magic he has doesn't exactly pique my interest, the spells you can get from giving him boss souls does. Which is the main reason I've been pushing through 1-3. Turns out, the Penetrator isn't just good for, um, you, you can use his soul for his spell is what I'm trying to say here. And after taking a short detour to save Astrava from the local riffraff, I finally arrive at the boss. God, what I would do to get your armor. I mean, I know what I would have to do to get your armor, and I wouldn't do that, but thankfully, between learning all the boss's moves for the crossbow only run and the extremely quick attack speed of my dagger, I think we've got this one in the bag. Am I over here? Or am I over here? Or am I- <laughs> Okay. I might have overdid it with the rolling around. The second attempt goes much smoother. I take my time, attacking when I can, and dodging through his attacks as safely as possible. And wouldn't you know it, that's all there was to it. Penetrator defeated, and Silver Demon Soul acquired. Which means it's just a quick run back to Sage Freak for my new spell. Light Weapon. It costs 50 mana to cast, and two spell slots to use, but I've got both of those already, so we're in business. Lodimus Luchum. 
you and I are gonna do great and terrible things together. You know what? Why wait? I've got a bunch of poppable souls. Let's pop them and boost up that stamina. I don't need this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Oh shit, wait, I actually did need that one. Uh, well, balls, that sucks. I was supposed to give the Siri Demon Soul to the blacksmith so he can make me boss weapons. I don't really need the Morian Blade this go around, but the Insanity Catalyst would have been a nice boost to my light weapon damage. Ah well, that's what I get for rushing. I mean, it's not like we needed the extra damage, but it would have been a relatively easy way to get more. Not the end of the world, but still a bummer. You know what else is a bummer? I got a frickin' gargoyle crossbow on my first walkthrough of the map. Thank you, Demon Souls. No, really, super cool of you to give me that on the run where I don't need it anymore! I show off my poking stick to all the worshippers around 3-2, which in turn breaks the spell they were weaving and brings the heart of Mensis crashing down. You know what I hate the most about this thing? Why does it have hands? I mean, look at them, they're all tiny and creepy. Why does it need hands? With the heart brought low, I can now access all the goodies it was hiding, which means I now have a ring of avarice, boosting my soul gain even further, and a golden mask. You know, I've never used this thing before. Kinda makes me look like a superhero. Stabby Stephanie, making the streets of Boletaria safe once more. Anyway, back to serious matters. The Maneater Twins. I, uh, I think we're gonna be fine. I knock the first Maneater down to half health, then use Light Weapon to finish the job before the second Maneater can join the fray. Well, almost before. Close enough as to not matter, really. And with only one Maneater left to deal with, this fight's basically over. It's a man-eater, make you work hard, make you spend hard, make you want all love its souls, it's a man- Tasteful amounts of copyright infringement aside, we've got one more boss in World 3. The sentient piece of yellow fabric. Oh, and the red man beneath it. Him too, I guess. So yeah, time to face the weirdest build in Demon Souls. Wolverine Claws, a helmet that completely blocks your screen if you try to wear it yourself, and magic homing missiles. Look. I get it's fun to try and break the meta when you're playing PvP, and that using wonky builds can be a breath of fresh air. But this? This ain't it, Chief. But with all of World 3 cleared in soul form, we now have pure white world tendency. Who's ready for one of the most convoluted treasure hunts in the game? First things first, we can unlock this door over by the soul mass enemy, then climb the stairs all the way to the second floor where we- Oh, the door's locked. Don't I have all the keys already? Well, yes and no. Turns out, if you go to World 3-2 in pure white tendency, this little wooden platform is here now, which means you can ascend one of the worshiper towers even higher. Get to the top of that, and you'll find the key to the cell block. Excuse me, I need another moment. Okay, all better. We go back to the locked door, and now we can- Okay, what the fuck? Apparently, that key isn't for the door. It's for Rydell's cell. And now that he's free, I need to go back to the door, which is now open. And no, I didn't get a new key, it's just unlocked now. And if you go to the end of the cell block, you'll find Rydell's physical body. And you can tell it's him because he has the phosphorescent pull weapon. And for reasons that I cannot fathom, he has the keys to the rest of the cells on this block. Which lets me finally, finally grab the parrying dagger, along with the accompanying rogue set. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but I think the quest lines in Dark Souls are actually more straightforward than this. But in any case, we now have a proper parry. And just in time, because the next area is full of enemies that deserve a good repost. That's right. It's time for Blight Town Alpha. God give me strength. Actually, in this case, can God grant me dexterity instead? I think I could use that more. Let me just test out the parrying dagger real quick. Uh, yep, that'll work. You know, I've never actually seen the rogue outfit before. What's it look like? <gasps> it's got a cape! The streets are extended gutters, and the gutters are full of blood. And when the trains finally scab over, all the vermin will drown, and all the people will cry, save us and I'll look down and whisper, no. Not gonna lie, I feel like a freaking hero with this outfit on. I think I have a new favorite armor set. Totally worth the near mental breakdown. Speaking of breakdowns, time to see how well I can dismember an entire legion of leeches. I'm sure it'll be fine. The walk down to the bottom of the arena got a little sticky, but putting almost 30 points into vitality seems to actually be helping. And if we combine that with the power of La Arma de Luz, as well as my not insubstantial stamina bar, and you've got a leechmonger fight that ends before it even began. Another two cycle boss. Seriously though, we've hit that point where I'm locked in. Dagger builds have always been my forte, but I've never felt so strong while using one before. This is absolutely ridiculous. I don't even have anything to say about that boss. It's just dead. Maybe this Joker will be enough to slow me down. Wait. Joker, where is she? Where is she? Oh, she's right down there. Sorry about that, didn't mean to yell at you. Hello, Estrella. I've come to save you. Where is she? But with World 5 completely cleared, there's only one more world to go. 
on to 4-2, where Tony's been hard at work making new friends. Lots and lots of new friends. Well, we can't have that. I carved my way through each and every one of them, because a friend of Tony's is an enemy of mine. Hey, buddy. Hey, meatbag. Woo, ouch, why? I'm dead. Nothing to see in the run up to the boss, if I'm being honest. So let's just skip right to the good stuff, is what I would say if there was any sort of challenge here to show you. But as those of you who aren't old heroes can see, the boss can easily be melted down. That is literally the fastest old hero fight I've ever had, bar none. Guess there's only one more boss in World 4 to go. The one and only boss I had any concerns about when plotting this run, the Storm King. Because as you might be able to tell, we've got a slight problem. He's a bit out of reach at the moment, and he won't come down unless you clear out most of his minions. So, for those of you in the audience who read my titles literally, there's your answer. No, you cannot beat Demon Souls with only daggers. Or any melee weapon, for that matter, aside from the Storm Ruler. But for those of us who aren't afraid of thinking outside the box, I ask you, what is a throwing knife if not a ranged dagger? Now, the damage throwing knives do is absolutely terrible. Easily a garbage tier consumable. And with this in mind, I decided to play around with the minion AI. And wouldn't you know it, I found something interesting. If you hit one of the Storm King minions with a throwing knife as they approach you, they'll not only stop their attack animations, but they'll also keep their same elevation level as they try to turn around and run. Which means, if you throw a knife or two at them while standing on the highest point of the arena, you just might find yourself within melee range. Not super useful, especially for the limited range I have with my dagger, but hey, new tech is new tech. And with enough minions killed, the Storm King finally comes into range. Time to see what these throwing knives can do- yeah, no, that's not happening in this lifetime. In desperation, I positioned myself up as high as I could get in hopes that I might be able to just hit the Storm King's tail. But no matter where I stood, it seemed to always be just out of reach. So close, but not close enough. I swear I've seen video proof of someone hitting the Storm King's tail before, but if I did, that was years ago, and for all I know, it was just a fever dream. If you had the same fever dream and know where to find that footage, please let me know. I swear it's real and can be done, but I can't find any mention of it online anywhere, and it's driving me nuts. As it stands though, it looks like we're gonna have to resort to throwing our daggers instead. And while the throwing knives do pitiful damage, the stealth throwing daggers are a different story. 30 damage. That sounds doable. Only one problem. The only way to get more of these things is by grinding out the assassin enemies in 1-3, and it's not exactly a common drop. Yeah, no, I'm too busy for that. So instead, I've got a different idea. I sprint through 3-1 to collect the copper key, then use it to save our new best friend, Blige. Once freed from his cage, Blige will meet us in 4-2, and looky here with the grave robber dragged in, poison dipped kunai. Because what is a kunai if not a smaller throwable dagger? Now, the damage they deal is actually worse than the throwing knives, but hit a Storm King minion with two, and you'll apply the poison status. Now don't get me wrong, poison in Demon Souls is a terrible status. There is a reason we never bothered to use the baby's nail earlier in the run. The damage from the poison is so slow and small that you'd probably kill a normal enemy with regular damage before the poison could do much of anything. But in a world where our options are either grind for hours or sit patiently for minutes, I'll take the latter. Because while it's terribly slow, it does work. Eventually. And now, the final question. Can the Storm King be poisoned? Well, if you hit him with four or five kunai, surprisingly, the answer is yes. Yes, he can. And now we just have to sit and wait for him to keel over. We, uh, we might be here a while. In the interest of speeding up the process, I threw some throwing knives at him every time he passed overhead, which didn't do a whole lot, but it did enough. And after a few minutes of patiently throwing knives into the eye of the storm, we've done it. Storm King defeated at World 4 complete which means we've only got one more boss to go. Side note, for those of you who know how to have fun and stuck around to see the rest of the video despite it technically failing, got a little tidbit for you. You know how people are always complaining that they don't like the new art style of the Demon's Souls remake? Next time they complain about it, ask them if they realize they can change it back. If you go into the camera options, you can change the filter, and then set it so that it persists in-game, not just during camera mode. That should shut them up for a bit. You're welcome. Time for the final level, 1-4. The King's Tower. Our first obstacle is the King's Guard, who are an absolute hassle if you try to take them all on at the same time, but nothing worth thinking too long about if you can get them alone. Just hack down the swordsman, backstab the guardian, and get in close to finish off the archer. After that, it's just a casual stroll past the blue dragon, and you're inside the palace proper. Oh, hey, it's Estrava. What are you doing here, buddy? Turns out, Estrava wants us to go back to 1 1 to go get a sword to fight the king. Estrava, this is a dagger run. I can't use that. Oh great, he took that personally. Now he's pouting. Oh, for the love of- Seriously? You're that mad about it? I can't. Use. Swords. Sheesh. 
Some people. Oh, come on! Well, I guess we might as well see what he was going on about. The run's almost over anyway. Thou who seekest the king's sword, I am the old king. Show me thy strength and the power of thy souls. Oh, uh, no, I'm just visiting. What, you're mad now too? What is with everyone who uses a sword being so sensitive today? Ooh, baby, you've got a lot of health. But it's okay. After wailing on him for a little bit, Old King Doran decides that I'm worthy to take the sword and use it against the king. I mean, I'll take the sword, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm pretty sure I made that abundantly clear earlier. Now, you can fight Doran if you want to, but there's not really a point. He's just a dude with the sword, and easy enough to defeat. The only thing he drops if you kill him is a ring that boosts stamina regeneration, which I don't need, and his armor set, which I can't wear. So, yeah. Let's move on. On to the second to last boss in the game, Old King Alant. Surely, this will be... Oh, wait, no. He's a pushover. Just turn on light weapon, put your dagger in one or two hands, and just go to town. There was a brief moment where I was worried, but a single stamina bar of panicked attacks was enough to finish him off. Um, long live the king? But with Old King Alot defeated, the path to the Old One is clear. And with one final leap, it's time to finish the run. Hello, old sport. You're looking verdant as always. Well, everyone, it's been a wild ride. But every journey comes to an end, and this one is no different. I find the true King Alant in all of his warped glory, turn on my knife light, then show him my daggers will always be superior to swords. The future is now, old man! And there you have it. Demon souls beaten with only a dagger. And a few throwing knives. That was way easier than I anticipated. Ah, shit, I put my controller down too hard. Oh, hey, a trophy. Well, I guess that's one way to end a run. Not very heroic of me, but- Oh, God, stop, stop, she's already dead! Uh, well, let that be a lesson, I guess. Pursuing the soul arts can turn even the strongest hero to chaotic evil. And so can setting down your controller. But in any case, that's that. Thanks for watching. I've been having a great time revisiting this game, so if you've got any other Demon Souls challenge runs you'd like to see, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments down below, and I'll see what I can do. But other than that, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.